This is a presentation of the Orioles Sports Network and 102.7 WMOM. High school sports are on the air and online. Watch this game at the Orioles Sports Network Facebook group or YouTube channel and listen to this game via radio at 102.7 WMOM. Smart devices like Amazon Alexa and Google Home or via streaming audio at WMOM.FM. This game is a presentation of the following sponsors. House of Flavors Manufacturing, House of Flavors Restaurant, Safe Harbor Credit Union, Indian Summer Co-op, Smith and Eddie Insurance. Also in part by PM Builders, Benedict's Collision, Lundquist Furniture, Crown and Cork Waterfront Kitchen, Ludington Paint and Glass. In addition, today's game is brought to you by Urca Auto Center, Team Jamie Loney Five Star Real Estate, McGee Insurance, Ludington Chiropractic, and Groundwork Landscaping. Now it's time to bring you all the action with Todd Scoop Hansen and the team live here on the Orioles Sports Network and 102.7 WMOM. Greetings and salutations, Oriole Nation. Welcome to Ludington Oriole Girls Basketball Action from Petoskey High School. We're way up north as the Ludington Orioles are playing in a regional number nine division two championship basketball game against the Nagani Miners from the Upper Peninsula. We thought we had a bit of a drive, Evan, a little over three hour drive from Ludington to Petoskey. Nagani had about a four hour drive. You know, last week, the, uh, the boys championship game at Gaylord, you had the Ludington Orioles against the Kingsford Flivers. Kingsford had like a five-hour drive to come to Gaylord. Ludington had, again, about a oh, close to a three-hour drive. But we're here, we made it, and uh, 102.7 WMOM and the Orioles Sports Network pleased as punch to be bringing you this regional championship game here at Petoskey High School tonight. We want a color commentary man tonight, the one and only Evan McKinley. Great to have you here, partner. Scoop, I'm really excited, you know, big regional game. Maybe bring home a regional championship to uh, Ludington this year. You know, the boys fell just short, uh, you know, last week. Uh, hopefully the girls are uh, able to bring it home tonight. Exactly, and uh, you saw what happened last night. The Kingsford Flivers played the Flint Powers Catholic Chargers. One heck of a basketball game in the Elite Eight. Flint Powers won that game 81 to 77, but a tremendous ball game. You look at the difference between two games, Evan. Ludington and Kingsford 37-34 in a defensive struggle. Then they go out Kingsford, they play an offensive battle against Flint Powers Catholic, 81 to 77. Crazy, yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. You know, you look at uh, some of the other games last night, Zeeland West versus Muskegon. Muskegon had beat Zeeland West uh, twice all year. And uh, you know, it's district uh, or regional basketball, Elite Eight basketball. You know, it's a whole new season. You don't know what's gonna happen. You know, Zeeland West came out and uh, was up 10 in late in the fourth quarter and Muskegon made a run and uh, you know, last second shot, Zeeland West pulled away and they're uh, moving on. So, you know, it's a whole different season here in, uh, you know, regional into the Elite Eight basketball. I mean, you never know what to expect. And, uh, you know, I hope the girls come to play tonight because I'd like to, uh, yeah. you know, be back for another game next week. That was the shocker around the state last night. Zeeland West upsetting Muskegon, no doubt about that. You know, these two teams met two years ago. That Ludington team that was led by Ryan Rohr and Keelan Laird, and that game was at Gaylord, and that was one heck of a battle. You did that game with me. You were my color commentary, man. Tremendous basketball game, very low scoring. I think the final was something like went uh, 30 to 28, uh, 32 to 29, something in that in uh, around that range. Tremendous game when I went down to uh, get the starting lineup from uh, Nagani coach Mike O'Donnell and go over the pronunciations of the players on his team. He goes, hey, how you doing, Scoop? I remember you from two years ago. And we talked a lot about that ball game. Tremendous game. Uh, his star player that year, Ella Mason, she was just a sophomore then. She's a senior now, and Coach Warren still can't say enough about her. He compares her, he said, he said, Scoop, she kind of reminds me a bit of our sunshine, David Schillinger. What a compliment that was. I mean, when, when Coach Stowe said that, no doubt about that. But you know, this Nagani team, 24 and one on the year, their only loss coming to Iron Mountain early in the season, I'm sorry, coming to Ishpeming early in the year, 57-53. They avenged that loss by defeating the uh, Ishpeming Hematites later in the season, 65 to 56. You know, our girls aren't too shabby either. 
They're 13 and one in their last 14 games. They've been playing outstanding defense. They're going to need every bit of that defense tonight against the Nagani Miners. Yeah, from what I've heard and uh, seen, Nagani's uh, quite the team. A lot of shooters uh, can knock shots down from outside, and they also have some size to be able to play inside. So we're going to have to bring a uh, you know strong defensive game and uh, slow them down, and uh, you know maybe a hot night of shooting. The last few nights we've struggled in the first half to make layups. Uh, you know, we've really been relying on the outside shot. Hopefully tonight we can get a little bit of everything going and, uh, you know, all around great game. We've been playing that outstanding stout defense, clutch shooting and ultra clutch free throws we've been hitting, no doubt about that. I uh, want to thank also our technical engineer tonight, Mason Conger, who's the uh, OSN 102.7 WMOM technical engineer. And again, my partner tonight, Evan McKinley doing color commentary. Scoop Hansen here, the voice of the Orioles on the play-by-play -play call. And we want to thank House of Flavors Manufacturing, exclusive pregame sponsor of the Orioles via the Orioles Sports Network. Delicious House of Flavors ice cream sold around the world, made right here in Ludington. House of Flavors Manufacturing is proud to help keep our hometown dynamic and support Ludington Orioles sports, producing and distributing quality ice cream since 1937, and pleased to be an important corporate citizen and premier employee. That's House of Flavors Manufacturing. Learn more at www.houseofflavors.com. A beautiful facility here. This gym looks like, you know, some, some colleges, I don't believe, even a facility like this. Look at the scoreboard. I mean, that's a, that is a uh, pro-style scoreboard you see up there, much like you see in the Breslin Center. Uh, you know, you go to some of these venues, it's phenomenal here. I was here 2018 covering our Ludington boys team after they'd won a district championship. It was a regional opener against Boyne City. Boyne had all of like 15 miles to drive to get here, you know, that day. Ludington, that was Joshua Lehman's uh, junior year. They jumped all over Boyne early. They had a big night, 19 to six lead, 19 to seven. Boyne kept chipping away, chipping away, and by halftime, Boyne was only down by, I, I wanna say somewhere between three and six points or so. And then Boyne came back, eventually won that game 55-44, knocking Ludington out in the opening game of the regionals uh, back in 2018. So this is my second time covering a game here. I was here two years ago covering a football game on their beautiful football field that Petoskey has. Ludington won that game in overtime, 37-31. Of course, Petoskey came up to our field this year, and they christened our field, and they defeated our Orioles 32-14 this past football season last fall. Yeah, Petoskey's got... Uh... You know, this is an awesome sports facility that they have. I think everything's kind of all uh, based around the high school as well, so it's all in one spot. You know, beautiful complex that we have here. Obviously, you're talking about the Jumbotron that they have. You know, you don't see very many high schools that have that. You know, Reese Puffer is one that comes to mind. Grand Haven, yeah. um, you know, most of those big Division I uh, schools. So, you know, maybe this is just a uh, flash forward to Breslin in a uh, week or so. Wow. Who knows? Who knows there, Evan? But they got it set up just like you see at the Breslin where they got the starting lineups, the players number, fouls, and points. So that's pretty neat right there. Right in, right in front of us right here. Yeah, we got a great view yeah. here. Uh, yep. So, you know, center of the court. Yep. And uh, a big thank you to Petoskey Athletic Director Joel Dome. And also a uh, shout out to Carl Johnson, who's the voice of Nagani Sports. Uh, He's right next to us over here. I had a nice chat with him earlier, and you don't see that often. So when you see a colleague like that, I went up and introduced him. He goes, I remember you from uh, back when Ludington and Nagani played a couple of years ago. So great battle. We talked about Ryan Rohr, of course, and a uh, uh, number of players from that team that went to the Breslin Center. Earlier, I talked with Oriole head coach Warren Stowe, and here's what he had to say in regards to tonight's ball game. Stay tuned, O-Nation. Welcome, Oriole Nation, to the House of Flavors Manufacturing pregame coaches interview. Coach Warren Stowe, the ride continues for your girls. Uh, they are in the Sweet 16, and tonight they play at Petoskey, way up north. They take on the 24-1 Nagani Miners. Nagani, the co-champions of the West Pac East Conference with an 11-1 record. Their only loss coming to Ishpeming, which uh, they got even with Ishpeming later in the season. They lost to them 57-53. And then they beat them a little bit later in the season, 65 to 56. So your girls are getting a really, really good basketball team tonight. And let's hope the uh, magic continues for the Ludington Orioles in the regional championship game at Petoskey. Yeah, um, you know, all the teams are good right now. And uh, Nagani is no exception to that. 
uh, the record speaks for themselves. And then when you watch them on film, um, they've got basketball players all over the court, uh, led by number 23. You know, people are in for a treat tonight. Uh, and I, I'll make sure I tell her and her coach that it's been fun. Um, and a little nerve wracking with this scout because she's fun to ro fun to watch. Oh. You know, she is uh, she can shoot the ball very well. She can finish with either hand at the rim. Um, you know, she almost reminds nobody really reminds you of David, but she's got a little bit of that quick stop. She'll elevate and and her pull up game is really good. So um, she's a fun player and and it all goes through her. So we know that we're gonna have to bottle her up to be successful. Uh -huh. They're coming off a 43-29 victory over Petoskey in their regional semifinal the other night, and they're really rolling. But you know, your girls are rolling. Your girls are 13 and one in their last 14 games. Yeah, we've uh, we've played well, and it's kind of clicked with us a little bit on the defensive end, offensive end, and just um, playing for each other. As I said after that game on Monday night, and. Uh, Hopefully we can keep that going. We know we're going to see man tonight, so that's nice. You know, we haven't seen a ton of that. Uh, we saw it Monday against Chip Hills, and we saw it uh, Wednesday night against Hart. So it'll be really important for us to make good decisions um, in the half court and then just be sound with our defensive assignments on the other end of the court. You looked at only loss of uh, the last 14 games, that four-point loss at Fremont. I think the Orioles are the last team standing in our area. Yeah, maybe. I... Uh, I'm trying to think. I, I think you're probably right. Yeah, so Fremont got knocked out the uh, other night. You know what? Did Frankfurt? Uh, I think Frankfurt oh, might nope. have won. They beat Glen Lake. So Rez is still going up there, and I'm very happy for Coach Resnick and uh, and all the Frankfurt girls. Uh, yeah. You know, we have a good relationship with them. We usually scrimmage them every year um, in the fall, and I like uh, Coach Resnick. He's a great guy. So rooting for them tonight. Frankfurt Panthers, they got some tough athletes up there, no doubt about that. During this uh, this run by your Orioles, what has been the thing that has made you the proudest of your team? Well, um, I'm proud that we are continuing to keep the hard work going and we are playing uh, together and for each other as best as we can. You know, you get through a a grind of a winter season and sometimes at the end kids are ready to quit not not literally but they're just they're just over it you know mm -hmm. and uh that's human nature and we've really been into it uh mentally and then uh i think that that has poured over onto the court and then basketball wise i think we have found some success here because we have amped it up on defense if that's if you think that's possible it is and then also um, we're rebounding the wall uh, the ball very very well and uh, I think that our ability to control the glass both on the defensive end and get offensive rebounds has helped us yeah you talked about Nagani star player what is it that Nagani likes to do offensively and what do they like to do defensively well, I'm laughing. Defense, uh, de I'll go defense first. Defense, they're going to play man. Uh, they're going to play full court man. Um, they're not looking to trap a whole lot. So, okay. you know, you just got to be sound with the ball and beat the pressure and then get in the half court. And they're going to um, put really good ball pressure on you. So that'll be hard. But, you know, offensively, and I don't know if it's all UP teams, but in my short coaching experience at Ludington, I remember when um, – when Gabe and Urka were sophomores, we played in Nagani, and I was on the scout for that with Thad, and I was just like, or not Nagani, Menominee, Menominee, and I was like, man, they just do so much stuff. And then the boys played Kingsford the other day, Kingsford the other day, and John and Thad were talking to me like, man, they do so much stuff. And now I'm watching Nagani, and I'm like, holy crap! So yeah. they run a million <laughs> sets. I'm on page three or four of out of bounds plays for them on the baseline. I mean. It's a lot of screen. It's all similar. It's all screen to yeah. screen interaction for yeah. that Mason girl. You know, they have her set screens so that you hope her girl helps, and then somebody else screens for her, and she often finds herself wide open. But they do that out of, oh my gosh, I can't even tell you, <laughs> twenty or thirty different sets. Uh -huh. It's kind of annoying, to be yeah. honest with you. You know, you look at it, coach. Uh, people say, well, yeah, Ludington always goes north, you know, in tournament time, but it always seems like we run into one tough Upper Peninsula team, and. No, that's a hearty bunch up there, those folks that they grow up in the Upper Peninsula and uh, they often have some talented basketball teams up there. One thing I want to draw a correlation to, some people, you know, it's, it's people like myself with the media who like to point this out, and you'll probably say, well, yeah, that's nice to look back at, Scoop, but when your team went to the Breslin a couple years back, uh, they went through a very good, well, not went through, it was a heck of a ball game in the, I think it was a regional championship game 
when your girls defeated Nagani. I remember that game like it was just yesterday. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, I put some of those uh, clips on just as a feel good yesterday um, to kind of show the girls, you know, that was the last time we had played in the regional final a couple years ago, but um, completely different teams on both ends. You know, the Ella Mason girl was their best player then, but she's two years more uh, now. I mean, she's better and, and we're a different team, but um, something that remains is that we're going to give it our all and we're going to be our best selves and we're going to fight, man. And I know that to be true. And when the dust settles, I hope we're on top. But if it isn't, you can always walk away with your head high because we're going to be who we are. Hey, you make it to the regional championship game. You've had an outstanding season. And I was talking to Coach Thad Shank about that with his boys in, uh, when I met with him yesterday. Coach, uh, you're 19-7 Ludington Orioles against the 24-1 and Nagani Miners tonight at Petoskey for a regional championship. Your starting lineup. I have uh, Emma at the one, Elle at the two, Peyton at the three, Jenna at the four, and Jordan at the five. And uh, we'll talk to you after the game. Go O's. Go O's. Welcome back to Petoskey High School. And uh, that was what, what uh, Coach Warren Stowe had to say earlier today, just before the bus left Ludington around 12 noon and headed up north. And uh, we, myself and Mason, we hit the road about 2.30. Beautiful drive coming north. And uh, we're, we're here, and it's supposed to be get nasty later with some rain, some, some freezing rain. But uh, uh, hopefully that doesn't materialize. But we got a ball game to uh, to watch and to cover and to bring to the Oriole Nation here. And we hope it's an exciting one. And we hope our girls continue playing the defense they've been playing, Evan. And uh, again, they're 13 and one in their last 14 games. They're going to need all of that defense and all that March Madness magic tonight as they take on the 24 and one Nagani Miners. Yeah, you know, Nagani coming from the UP, obviously we don't see any teams from the UP during the regular season, and, uh, you know, they don't see really any teams from the lower peninsula. So, I mean, it's kind of interesting to look at the teams that they play, and, you know, they got some big wins on their schedule, but we also have some big wins as well. Uh, but the one thing that I uh, look at is how many points they score. And yeah. I think that our defense uh, can definitely shut them down. So, I mean, if we lock up on defense, uh, you know, limit the amount of offensive rebounds that they're able to get. You know, they have good shooters. They're going to make shots. The, the scorers are going to score their points. And, uh, you know, as long as we can come down on the offensive end and uh, get the job done, I think we'll uh, come out victorious. 24-1 and one on the area, 11-1 co-champions of the Westpac East Conference. Their only loss, again, coming at the hands of the Ishpeming Hematites, 57-53. to 53. Uh, a loss they avenged later in the season over the Hematite, 65 to 56. Some other impressive wins they had. Whenever you beat a Marquette team, they're a Division I school, and they defeated them twice this year, 55 to 37, and also 49 to 36. Uh, win over Escanaba, 61 to 48. Uh, other wins, uh, oh, they, they came down for the Nagani Holiday didn't come down they hosted it the Nagani holiday Christmas tournament they defeated Manton and Manton had a really good year this year the Manton Rangers 57 to 50 and they defeated Baraga uh, 63 to 48 in that same holiday Christmas tournament and Iron Mountain two wins against them this year uh, the, the miners of Nagani the uh, hometown of my former pastor Doug Nemi and if pastor Nemi is back in Ludington listening tonight a shout out to you and Pat uh, Doug Nemi played on Nagani State Champion boys basketball team. He was a starter on that team, I believe, in 1957. So, big Nagani Miners fan. Uh, and uh, again, they're coached by Michael O'Donnell. We want to thank Pure Marquette Builders, our exclusive player, uh, actually, our exclusive starting lineup sponsor. PM Builders, located at 913 South Washington Avenue in Ludington. PM Builders construct quality homes in the West Michigan area. Looking to build, give Scott Latimer a call to set up an appointment, 231-398-7463. As we're about a minute away from the uh, playing of our national anthem, and uh, we want to thank Smith & Eddie Insurance, our exclusive post-game sponsor, Smith & Eddie Insurance of Ludington, Scottville, and Manistee, caring business foremost in insurance and community support. For peace of mind, let Smith & Eddie handle all of your insurance needs. Shout out, special shout out to Caleb Loxanen. We understand it's his birthday today. So happy birthday, Caleb Loxanen. And uh, go O's. All right, uh, we're here again at this beautiful facility in Petoskey. Way up north, we're not too far from the Mackinac Bridge. Being up here in Petoskey, beautiful town. And uh, seems like it's grown quite a bit uh, you know, since I was here even last. You know, look at the size of the school right here. 
And I understand at times they're one of the uh, biggest Division II schools in the state of Michigan. All right, Oriole fans, at this time we are going to step aside and have our national anthem. And uh, when we come, we'll give you those PM Builders starting lineups. Stay tuned, Oriole Nation. Remember, nothing beats good sportsmanship. Sports fans and spectators, at this time we ask that you stand. The privilege of this event was made possible by those who have fought and continue to fight for the freedoms that we enjoy. Let us honor and respect their efforts and our great country by gentlemen removing their caps and everyone standing at attention, placing their hands over their hearts as we proudly sing our national anthem. Welcome back, Oriole Nation. The Orioles of Ludington, 19 and seven on the year, 10 and two in the West Michigan Conference. Lakes Division, they were the runner up in that uh, conference to the Fremont Packers and the Nagani Miners, 24 and one on the year, 11 and one co-champions of the West Pac East Conference along with the Ishpeming Hematites. Here are your PM Builders starting lineups. First for the Nagani Miners, coached by Mike O'Donnell, assisted by Todd Branshaw. Starting at the guards, number four, Callie Raiula, and she is a senior. Also number 11, Off Johnson, a junior. The point guard, number 23, Ella Mason, and she is a senior. Forwards are number 22, Madison Peckerel, uh, and uh, number 20, uh, 33, Grace Nardi. Again, the Vigani Miners, 24 and one on the season. For the Ludington Orioles, coached by Warren Stowe, Katie Mesher, and also Troy Veneman, starting at the guards, number five, Peyton Welch. Peyton Welch is a junior. So number 20, Eliana Jerusal, a junior. Number 23, Emma McKinley, a senior. Forwards are number 10, Jenna Skiba, a junior. And number 40, Jordan Anderson, a junior. Again, the Orioles, 19 and seven on the season. Ludington going 10 and two, runners up in the West Michigan Conference Lakes Division. Orioles will be in their black jerseys tonight. They have orange lettering and numerals trimmed in white. Nagani in their white jerseys. Blue numerals and lettering trimmed in yellow. And here we go, Evan, for Let's the go, regional. Scoop. Yep, for the regional number nine, Division Two Girls Basketball Championship. And for a ticket and a trip to the state quarterfinals, the Elite Eight. The tip is controlled by the Ludington Orioles. Emma McKinley with the ball. McKinley will give the ball to Welch. Welch now over to Jerusal. Jerusal on the drive. She'll dish it to McKinley. She'll fake the three. McKinley on the drive. Anderson baseline jumper up, no good. Rebound to Nagani. Great look for the Orioles. Just couldn't finish on that first opening possession. Yeah, great first possession. Nagani came out in a you know, tough man-to-man -man defense. We were able to get the shot that we wanted. Unfortunately, it just didn't fall. Aubrey Johnson with the ball tipped. And there's a steal and with the ball for the Orioles, number five, Peyton Welch. Welch, a junior, she'll give the ball now to Emma McKinley. Over to Jerusal, three-pointer, good! Oh, my! Eliana 
Yeah, Drew Rebe. Down. Yeah. Well, great shot by Eliana from the outside, knocking down a three-pointer. Quick 3-0 lead. I'll tell you what, that shot came from Boyne Falls. That was a long three-pointer there by Jerusalem, and it drew nothing but net. Bloodington off to a quick 3 to nothing lead. Yeah, Eliana Six. coming off a uh, great game on Monday night, uh, keeping up the confidence from the outside. She's definitely feeling it. He'll work the ball. There's a block right there. And it will be Nagani basketball, but a great defensive play right there by Peyton Welch. You know, I got to say that Nagani does have the advantage here with the student section. They got at least 40 to 50, maybe 55 students. Ludington, we're 11 strong with our student section. But they'll make a lot of noise, no doubt about that. Nagani shot up and no good. Rebound, a strong rebound by Emma McKinley. And here come the Orioles. McKinley will get the ball ahead now to Jerusalem. Inside, Anderson up and, oh, no good. We're going to have to have those shots in a game like this. Point blank, and now getting back in a shot up and no good by Nagani. Ball fought for, and we're going to have a traveling violation on Nagani. Great start for the Orioles. I love the energy. We definitely did not have the start the other night at Big Rapids against the Clare Pioneers. Yeah, we're coming out with great energy, and this is the energy you need in a big game like uh, the regional final. They'll get the ball in. Jerusalem with it. Now Jerusalem loses the ball out of bounds, and it will be Nagani basketball. 6.29 to go in the opening quarter. Regional 9, Division 2 championship basketball game here at Petoskey High School. Ludington 3, Nagani nothing. With the ball for the Miners, number 4, and that's Cali Raula. Shot no good. Good defense by the Orioles right there. Welch has the basketball for the Orioles. Nice dribbling there by Peyton Welch. Welch being guarded there by Aubrey Johnson. McKinley with it now. McKinley, good job, just not to drag her feet. Nice pass there, shot up and it's up, no good. Rebound Anderson up and good! Yeah, Jordan great Anderson. Great offense rebound by Jordan Anderson. She has a height advantage down there. Nagani doesn't really have the size that Jordan has. Uh, so I think we're gonna see a big night offense rebound. Orioles up five, nothing. And now there's a foul called on Jordan Anderson and taking the shot for Nagani, number 22, and that was Madison Peckroll. And Peckroll at the free throw line. She'll be shooting two. Ludington up five to nothing. First free throw, 5.49 to go in this opening quarter. Three pointer for Jerusalem and a bucket for Anderson so far for the Orioles. Second attempt is up and good. Nagani is on the board. A free throw there for Madison Peckerel. Coach Mike O'Donnell before the ball game. Ludington on the attack. They're up five to one. Now traveling violation. Emma just got a little, she got happy feet there. A little bit of happy feet, a little bit too much energy. She was ready to go. You know, Nagani's uh, extending their defense on the made shot, so we'll have to uh, handle that pressure. Nagani, again, 24 and one on the season. Co-champions of the Westpac East Conference at 11 and one. Orioles looking for their 20th win of the year. They're 19 and seven. Nagani working the ball. It's number four with it. The shot up and in. Good drive right there. That's Callie Raula. Raula with the basket and now uh, it'll be Ludington ball. Batted out of bounds there by Raula. Ludington up five to three, 516 to go in the opening quarter. Coach Warren Stowe shouting out instructions to his girls. Ball will be triggered in by Peyton Welch. And now Welch will get it into McKinley. Emma will bring the ball up. She's guarded there by Raula. And now Welch with it. Welch on the drive. Peyton Welch, nice. Oh, they're going to call an offensive foul there. They say that Welch hooked the Nagani defender. Yeah, Peyton had her arm around the back. Good call by the official. In for the Orioles, number two, Riley Stone, a senior, and also number 30, Madeline Kenyon, a sophomore. There's one thing the Orioles may have definite advantage on tonight is the depth. Here comes Nagani with the ball. That is Ella Mason with it. She's their star player, a senior, all-time leading girl scorer there. Coach O'Donnell said she is now over. Uh, she went over about 1,300-some points, all-time leading scorer. Shot missed by Nagani, rebound to the Orioles. Stone with it now. Orioles up 5-3, to 4.36 to go in the opening quarter. Kenyon, 
She wants to launch that three-pointer, but she'll give it back to Welch now. Nagani was pretty quick getting out, her, getting out on her. And now Stone with it. Stone working, and now her pass is deflected. Anderson has it, however. She'll give it now to Kenyon, to McKinley. McKinley now to Stone. Riley Stone. Welch. Welch loses it, gets it back. Welch in the lane shot. God! Boy, she created some space there, and she gets the bucket in the paint. Yeah, the defender, uh, you know, tripped over her own feet. Peyton was able to drive right in and uh, finish at the bucket. You know, so far, Ludington's offense is looking great. Ludington up 7-3, to three, 3.56 to go in the opening quarter. Now a foul will be called on the Orioles. Hey, folks, Safe Harbor Credit Union is our exclusive halftime show sponsor. Safe Harbor Credit Union, where your success is a success. We belong to you. Visit them at 5511 US 10 in Ludington or give them a call, 843-2323, Safe Harbor Credit Union. Special shout out to our OSN Executive Director, Producer, the one and only Thad Shank, back in Ludington, listening to tonight's ball game. And congratulations to Coach Shank and his Ludington Royal boys on a fine 19 and seven season in a district championship and an oh so close regional championship last week at Gaylord High School against the Kingsford Flivers. Oh, nice save there by Kingsford, or Kingsford by Nagani, but, it, but Emma McKinley has it for the Orioles. She'll get it ahead now to Welch. Welch on the drive, shot no good, but she draws the foul, and uh, love the aggressiveness by our Orioles at both ends of the court right now. Yeah, we, uh, Coach Stowe switched up the defense last position a, a little bit of a, uh, you know, one, two, two matchup zone, kind of threw Nagani off, and, uh, you know, we were pushing the ball in transition, and uh, um, Peyton's going to the line. Welch at the charity stripe. First free throw, in and out, no good. Into the Nagani lineup, number 12, Gretel Johnson. Also checking in, number 44, Claire O'Donnell. And number 20, Kiera Waterman. Three new minors on the court. Second free throw up, good. One of two free throws there for Peyton Welch. She's got three points in the first quarter. Ludington up by the score of six. Eight to three. 322 to go in this opening quarter. Nagani Miners with the basketball. Orioles playing some just ferocious and some just tenacious defense right now. With the ball, number 23, that's Ella Mason. Stone doing a real nice job on her. She'll get it inside. There's a walk. Nice travel. Traveling violation on Nagani. So Ludington's defense creating this, Evan. Yeah, Riley Stone playing a little bit of uh, face guard on 23, their best player. You know, not really uh, letting her get open. Welch will trigger the ball in. She just gets the five, beats the five second violation and she'll give it to Kenyon. Kenyon brings the ball up. And uh, Ludington, uh, no, uh, wow, Ludington's gonna catch a break there. A foul will be called on Nagani and it'll be called on number 11, Aubrey Johnson. Welch. Yeah, I'd like to see Madeline just clear the floor out with Nagani playing man-to-man -man defense. She can beat her man one-on-one -on -one down the court. 2.55 left in the opening quarter. Ludington 8. Now tune in in Oriole Nation. We appreciate it as you support your Ludington Orioles. Kenyon, she'll give it now to Stone. Stone on the drive. Shot up and gone! What a nice drive there by Riley Stone. Yeah, great aggressiveness. Riley uh, coming across the court, able to get to the right side and finish strong. Orioles up by seven, 10 to three. 2.32 to go in the opening quarter. Here's a three-pointer up by Nagani. No good. Rebound Anderson. She'll outlet it now. Orioles got a two-on-one here. Kenyon with it now. She'll th slow things up. Nice job there by Kenyon. She saw that uh, Ludington did not have the angle there to the basket. Stone, too hard right there. Uh, trying to create right there, just too hard off the backboard. And here comes Nagani. 2.07 to go in the opening quarter. Three-point attempt by Nagani. In and out, no good. Rebound. Good defense by the Orioles. And with it for Nagani right now, number 24, that's Teresa Anderson who's checked into the game. And we'll have a foul called on the Orioles. Ludington up 10 to three. Anything is surprising you in this first quarter, Evan? Uh, Nagani, uh, you know, crashing the glass hard, but one thing is our offense. I mean, being up 10-3, our offense is, uh, you know, making this Nagani defense work real hard and we're getting the shot that we want every time. And exactly, and notoriously, we're most of the time we're a slow starting team as well. Free throw is up and good. First yeah. free throw, good. Looking at our first three district games, I mean, our first quarter, I don't know if we scored more than seven points. So, I mean, it'd be at 10 points with two minutes left in the first quarter, we're looking good. 
Got a score from my good buddy Justin Peck at the end of the first quarter. Freeland is her second free throw up and good. Two free throws there for Teresa Anderson. Orioles up 10 to five. And Ludington will, there's a steal. And Ludington will get the ball back. That's Skiba checked into the game. Skiba, now the ball, boy, it's a hot potato right now. And now Ludington loses the ball. It's like it's got grease on it right now. Yeah, that was a uh, you know hot potato possession, as you said. A couple of steals back and forth, and then uh, we lost the ball underneath yeah. the rim. For end of first quarter score, Freeland 24. And Flint powers Catholic 10. So Freeland really taking it to the Chargers at the end of the first quarter. A big thank you to Justin Peck for that score update. 140 to go in this opening quarter. And you got fans on both ends getting, uh, getting into it right here. They're wanting fouls called. And boy, these officials are really letting them play right now, Evan. Here's a drive, shot up, and no good. Rebound, no good, and a foul will be called on Skiba, I believe, yes. Ludington up 10-5, to 124 to go in the opening quarter. At the line, number 24, Teresa Anderson. She's really provided a spark for the Miners since she came in. First free throw is good. Emma McKinley back into the Oriole lineup and she'll replace Peyton Welch and give Peyton a breather. She got McKinley out there now with Skiba. Also, Jalen Laird has checked into the game. She wears jersey 44 and she is a sophomore. Well, we know Teresa Anderson can shoot free throws. She's four for four now. And Freeland, or Nagani's got back into this game. It's 10 to seven. And now the Orioles are really getting flustered on their inbound pass. They turn it over again, Evan. Yeah, this uh, Nagani full court press is uh, giving us fits, trying to get the ball in bounds. Nagani with the basketball as they forced another Oriole turnover. Three pointer up and no good. Rebound to Eaton. I'm, that's Kenyon, I'm sorry, Madeline Kenyon with the rebound. Where'd I come up with Eaton? Kenyon, Kenyon will give it now to Jerusalem in the lane. Shot up, no good. Ball fought for, and Nagani has it. That's Claire O'Donnell with it. She is just a sophomore, and she'll give the ball now to Ella Mason. Mason, oh, what a move by Ella Mason. That's her first points of the game. We don't want her to get started now, and all of a sudden that 10-3 Oriole lead is evaporated to 10-9 to with 34 seconds to go. In this, there's another steal by the Nagani Miners. Ludington's gonna have to figure this out or they're gonna be in big trouble. And now they're behind. Basket up and in there by Gretel Johnson. And just like that, the Ludington Orioles 10-3 lead is now an 11-10 deficit, Evan. Yeah, this Nagani full court press is giving us fits right now. They're taking the inbounding, uh, you know, defenseman and they're double teaming our screen. Uh, you know, we're gonna be able to post up on that, look for the ball over the top and go the other way. Uh, they're switching screens. You know, the, the screener's gonna be open every time if they're able to spin off and uh, pin their girl on the backside and come to the ball. So I think Coach Stowe is going to go over that. I'm sure he went over at practice watching film. He knew exactly what they're going to do. Uh, so he's just going to go over that on the timeout right now. And, uh, you know, we'll come out and get the ball in bounds and get this, uh, you know, get our offense rolling again. We want to thank Indian Summer Co-op. They are the exclusive player in the spotlight. Tonight it's going to be the LHS athletic trainer in the spotlight. That'll be Miss Jen Mirai. Yesterday, I had a fun interview with her, and that'll air at halftime. My interview with Miss Jen Mraz, the LHS athletic trainer. Indian Summer Co-op, they are proud to be a sponsor of the Oriole Sports Network and our Ludington area athletes. We wish you all the best for this season of sports. Play strong, play proud, and as always, stay healthy. Go Ludington Orioles. This place is rocking. We've got a song, a classic song from the 80s now by the Irish rappers, House of Pain, playing this is the OG uh, Happy Gilmore song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ludington basketball. They're down 11 to 10. They'll get the ball in. And it's in now. And there goes Skiba. And here's where, if they can break this, uh, and Laird has it right now. And her pass is picked off. And here comes Nagani right now. Ludington is absolutely just flustered right now. The ball goes off. Ludington out of bounds. It'll be Nagani basketball. If Ludington can break this press, they'll have they'll have a two on one, which we had there momentarily, but uh, we just couldn't uh, finish on it. 
Yeah, Nagani's just trying to speed us up, and they're uh, you know doing a great job of it right yep. now. And there's a basket by Claire O'Donnell. And now a three-point lead for Nagani. And the momentum is definitely swung. Now a five-second violation called on the Orioles. I However, foul before. Yep, but, but uh, what do we have here? Yeah, now the, uh, the officials before. are... I don't know what the yeah. foul totals are right now. The, the officials are going to meet right now. They're having a confab. The buzzer sounded ending the first quarter, but I believe a foul was called. And uh, let's see if this is two shots for the Orioles. We'll see. But Orioles have to solve this. They have to solve this... Uh, this defense and this press being put on right now by the Nagani Miners. So, officials are meeting right now, and... We gotta well, be close to five fouls here in the first geez, quarter. I, I thought, but right now it's just gonna be Ludington inbounding the ball right now, and... You know, Now we got some good conversation going on. Good hearted conversation between the Ludington fans and the Nagani fans here. But what a charge here and a run by and a run by Nagani. Three tenths of a second left on the clock. Ludington basketball. They'll inbound it, and there's the horn. And at the end of one from Petoskey High School, the regional number nine division two championship game, the Nagani Miners 13, the Ludington Orioles 10. We want to thank Benedict's Auto Center, providing the best in auto body repairing and painting since the 1940s. Benedict's Auto Center would like to remind you to exercise extra caution on the roadways. However, if you do end up with a scrape, if you're involved in a fender bender, or if you suffer major collision damage, give my buddy Mike Benedict a call, 231-613-4111. Benny also reminds you that it is your choice when it comes to selecting a car repair business. You can go where you desire to have your vehicle repaired. Benedict's Auto 10 between Ludington and Scottville. They'll put collision damage in reverse. What are the Orioles, besides settling down, Evan, what do they have to do to, uh, to stem the, the, uh, the onslaught that's going on right now by the Nagani Miners? And take care of the ball. That's number one. You know, the first four minutes, we did a great job of it. Granted, uh, Nagani wasn't able to uh, play very much full court press because they didn't make very many shots. Um, but if we're able to break this press, our, our offense hasn't been stopped. You know, Nagani went on this run when they were able to force all these turnovers when you were trying to inbound the ball. We'll begin play here in the second quarter. Nagani 13, Ludington 10. The Miners right now, they're on a 10-0 run. And it is Nagani basketball. They'll get the ball in. Ella Mason. Orioles held her to two points in the first quarter. She is their spark plug. She is their leader. They got four big free throws from Teresa Anderson, two points from Claire O'Donnell, two from Gretel Johnson, and two from Kelly Raula. There's a shot up, no good. Rebound up and in. Getting the basket, number 20, Kiara Waterman. Her first points of the game. Gawney lead 15 to 10. There's a shot up and good! Peyton Welch. Orioles needed that in the worst of ways right there, and that... Uh, that stops a 12-0 run by Nagani. With the ball for the, there's a block right there. However, getting the ball back and getting the basket for Nagani, number 24, Teresa Anderson. Ludington uh, Welch did a nice job getting the block right there. Unfortunately, the block went right to the, uh, the Nagani player, Kiara Waterman, who gets the basket. Ludington trails 17 to 12. There's a drive. Shot no good there by Jerusal and a rebound to Nagani's Teresa Anderson. Ella Mason with it. Mason will give it now to Anderson. Anderson, she'll give it to her teammate Gretel Johnson. Orioles trail 17 to 12. There's a shot blocked right there. Out of bounds, last touched by Peyton Welch. It'll be Nagani basketball. 6.30 left in the second quarter. Orioles were outscored 13 to 10 in the first eight minutes of play. Ella Mason will trigger the ball in and she'll get it in now to Gretel Johnson. Her shot up, no good. Rebound fought for, and now it's 
Great hustle there by Teresa Anderson. She got to the ball as she was going out of bounds, and she was able to toss it off of the Orioles' Peyton Welch. So it is Nagani basketball. Anderson with it. Now she'll give it to Gretel Johnson. Johnson loses it, and fight for the ball there. And it is a tie-up, and it's going to be possession arrow to the Ludington Orioles. That was a good stop on defense. Let's see if we can break this press and go down and get a bucket. Orioles trail 17 to 12. 611 left in the second quarter. Welch gonna trigger the ball in, and she gets it in just in time to Jenna Skiba. Skiba now to McKinley. McKinley on the dribble. Emma McKinley with it at the top of the key. McKinley still with it now. She'll give it to Welch. Welch to Jerusalem. Jerusalem for three. God! Oh my! Right there, sister. Hey, that's right, right where we need it, Scoop. You know, get a little bit more energy in these girls like we started out with. Jerusalem with the three, and the Orioles are down by a bucket now. 17 to 15. 5.36 to go in the opening half. Boy, Ella, Eliana's getting that ball, and she's wanting to shoot it no matter where she is. There's a, okay, Oriole defense forces a turnover. Another turnover, that's great. And Riley Stone will check into the Oriole lineup and give Jenna Skiba a breather. So you got Stone out there now with McKinley, Anderson, Welch, and Jerusalem. Into the Nagani lineup, number 11, Aubrey Johnson. Wait, look at this defense. They'll get it in to McKinley. Boy, Nikavani plays some defense, I'll tell you. Yeah, much like uh, Ludington, yep. they, uh, you know, aggressive man-to-man -man defense. There's a turnaround by Stone, no good. Rebound to Nagani's number 23, Ella Mason. You're, you're right, both teams, it's like a mirror, mirror defense right here. Now a foul will be called on the Orioles' Peyton Welch. Nagani 17, Ludington 15, 5.07 to go in the opening half. Shout out to Ella and Rochelle Higgins, our biggest Oriole fans listening in Carlisle, Arkansas. I should say they're the biggest Oriole, yeah, the biggest Oriole fans in Carlisle. With the ball, number 11, that's Aubrey Johnson for Nagani. She'll give it now to Gretel Johnson, inside wide open. Somebody missed an assignment there. Kira Waterman gets the basket. Ludington down now, 19 to 15. Emma McKinley with the ball. 4.43 to go in the opening half. There's a drive, and now a foul is going to be called as Welch gets fouled. I'd like to send a shout out to Mark Rinkovitz. Or as we call him, Mock. Mock Rinkovitz, big Oriole fan, good fan of uh, our good friend of uh, Oriole head coach Thad Shanks. And he's been following the Orioles of late, and he wishes them all the best. That's pretty good coming from a Mason County Central Spartan. One heck of a, of a football player was Mark Rickovitz. There's an offensive rebound and a putback by Jordan Anderson, and the Orioles draw within two. Nagani 19, Ludington 17, 420 to go in the opening half. There's a baseline jumper up, no good. Ball fought for offensive rebound and a foul is gonna be called there, I believe on Peyton Welch. Yeah, Nagani's crashing the glass. We gotta be able to find a body and box out. Also, uh, shout out to my good buddy, Eric Bentz. And Eric, a big uh, Oriole fan, and good seeing Eric this past Sunday at our Danish Brotherhood Beckman League Fantasy Baseball Draft. It's always good seeing Eric there. And, and the boys, Chris Bossy, Eric Jensen, Rob Jensen, Brian Jensen, and uh, George C. Wilson and all those guys. Here's a three-pointer from Nagani, no good. Rebound for Nagani's number 20, Kerry Waterman. Waterman will give it now, and there's Ellis Mason shot, no good, but boy, oh boy. Ludington has to do something right now, Evan, the way that Nagani, as you said, is crashing the glass. Yeah, we talked about it during the district run. Uh, you know, we had the best rebounding, uh, you know, probably of the whole season. It's kind of fallen off the last two games, mm -hmm. so we got to be able to find a body and a rebound and uh, not give Nagani yep. those second-chance opportunities. 3.53 to go in the opening 
half, and the, the fouls are really starting to pile up now for the Orioles. They're called again. Ludington trails 19 to 17. Big news, the Ludington Dairy Queen is open. Got the scoop on it. They're open, so that's gonna make a lot of people happy. It's always a great time of year when the Ludington DQ opens. There's a, about a 16-footer up, no good. Offensive rebound, Nagani and good. We're just getting absolutely killed on the boards right now. Yeah, Nagani has all kinds of second chance opportunities. Yep. We gotta be able to cut down on those in a box out. Waterman got that basket. She's just a freshman. She's got six points in this first half. Nagani up 21 to 17. Fort Ludington working inside. Laird shot. God! With the left hand, Jalen Laird gets the basket. Yeah, great find by Eliana. You know, great post up by Jalen as well, and good finish. Ludington up 21 19. There's a block Big by block. Anderson. She'll outlet it now. Ludington's got numbers here. Jerusalem, oh, too much on the pass right there. She throws it out of bounds, and it'll be Nagani basketball. Yeah, just playing a little bit quick. Oh my gosh, Flint Powers has turned it around. Remember I told you they were down? Freeland was up 24 to 10 at the end of the first quarter. We're at the, uh, they're at the half now, and Freeland is trailing Powers 33 to 28. What a turnaround. It, it's yeah, basketball a, for you. Uh, game of runs. You know, much like this game has been, uh, you know, we're still uh, down by two, but, you know, we've kind of picked it up here in the second quarter. All right, right now we have 3.04 left in the second quarter. Nagani 21, Ludington 19. Nagani with the basketball. The Miners from Michigan's Upper Peninsula. They play in the Westpac East Conference. And uh, they've had a fantastic season, 24 and one overall. Shot up and no good. Ball fought for Nagani, another offensive rebound. And what a pass, oh my goodness. What a pass right there. And getting the basket, Claire O'Donnell. I don't know how she got that pass through two Ludington defenders. Nagani up 23 to 19, Laird on the drive, up, no good. And here comes Nagani. Ludington's getting really good looks. Yeah, really good looks, we're just not able to get them fall around the rim. Miners with the basketball, 23 has it, that's Ella Mason. Mason will give it now to Kiera Waterman. Waterman, Gretel Johnson, now there's a shot on the way up, no good. And Jerusalem has it for the Orioles, and she'll give it now to Madeline Kenyon. Kenyon wears jersey 30. Now to Laird. Laird, Jerusalem for three. No good. Rebound to Ella Mason. 155 to go in the opening half. There's a shot up. No good. Ball fought for. It's going to be a jump ball, and it's going to be possession arrow to Nagani. Jenna Skiba will report into the Oriole lineup. Tell you, as aggressive as the Orioles are, they have met their match here in this first half with the Nagani Miners. Yeah, Nagani's a uh, great basketball team, strong with the ball. They got a great defense, but we're hanging around, Scoop. Yeah, we certainly are, no doubt about that. 23-19, timeout on the floor. Hey, uh, belated birthday wishes go out to Ludington Orioles. Severa Moser, whose birthday was on Monday, March 11th. We meant to send her a happy birthday wish that night at Big Rapids. We didn't get around to it, so belated birthday wishes, Severa Moser whose birthday was on Monday. We want to thank Lundquist Furniture, West Michigan's largest furniture store, located at 203 North Main Street, downtown Scottville. Family owned and operated since 1940. For your furniture needs, call Lundquist, 231-757-3368. And Ludington Paint and Glass, mixing paint and service since 1948. The local store with more, located at 213 South James Street, downtown Ludington. Call Matt Ewing at Ludington Paint and Glass, 843-8250. Ludington Paint and Glass, the local source for all of your projects, is proud to support Ludington Orioles Sports while being a sponsor on the Orioles Sports Network. All right, it is Nagani basketball. Ball deflected off Emma McKinley. Nagani basketball. Yeah, our defense is definitely locked up here in the second quarter, you know, kind of slowing down that Nagani offense that's, uh, you know, got some firepower to it. They definitely do. And, you know, the, the main thing about this uh, Nagani offense, Ella Mason is her big scorer. She's only scored two points in this first half. But her teammates have been scoring uh, fairly often. And, uh, again, Ludington only down. There's a turnover. Shot up, no good. Rebound up, no good, and a foul. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, just not a... A uh, great uh, decision by Madeline, who kind of got trapped down there between three girls and picked up her dribble and 
you know, made a pass that, that she wished that she could have back. Aubrey, and, yeah. You know, the big thing about that was Nagani was able to get two offensive rebounds in between our two Ludington Orioles down there. Aubrey Johnson at the free throw line for the Nagani Miners. Her first shot is good. Very uh, well-balanced scoring by the Miners. I was just alluding to the fact that Ella Mason only had two points. But you look, they've also had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other Miners have scored beside her. Second free throw is up and in and out, no good. And we have a jump ball and possession arrow again to the Ishpeming Miners. I'm sorry, the Nagani Miners. Oh my goodness, I called them the Ish. That's the Hematites. Ishpeming's the Hematites. Too much research, Scoop. You got too many uh, teams' names in your mind. Nagani is the Miners. All those great nicknames from the Upper Peninsula. We've talked about that before, you know, the Flivers of Kingsford the Bessemer Speed. They were the Speed Boys and Speed Girls. I think it's just Bessemer Speed now. And you got the Waters meet Nimrods. Oh, okay. They're it, gonna switch it, actually, yep, they had it wrong. They didn't switch it the last time, so it's uh, Ludington ball. It is Ludington basketball. I thought that that was awfully quick that, uh, you know, they, they just had a held ball not too long ago. Okay, they'll get the ball in to Laird. Back now to Jerusalem. Orioles trail 24 to 19. McKinley with it now, 118 to go in the Opening half, the regional number nine, division two championship basketball game. The winner, there's a three-pointer, McKinley, good! McKinley from the far baseline, nails the three, tickles the twines. Yeah, that was a big three scoop, pull us back within two points. You know, after that, uh, you know, we got the jump ball back. Ludington. Let's see if we can get a stop and yep. uh, maybe tie this game back up. Nagani 24, Ludington 22. Good hustle there, and we're gonna have a tie up. And this time it will be Nagani basketball. With 52.3 seconds remaining, Ludington was down 13 to 10 at the end of the first. At one point, they had a 10 to three lead, and then Nagani went on that 12-0 run. Orioles hanging right with the Nagani Miners here. And again, the winner of this game goes to the Elite Eight. There's a nice block by McKinley, but the ball ends up in the hands of Nagani's number 22, Madison Peckerel. She gets the basket, and Ludington now trails 26-22. Kenyon with the basketball. She'll give it now to McKinley. Over to Jerusal. Jerusal with 25 seconds to go in this opening half. The winner of this game will be, there's a three point at that block, but there's a foul called there. And she's gonna shoot three. Eliana Jerusal will shoot three free throws. The winner of this game goes to the Elite Eight, the state quarterfinals. They'll play at Gladwin next week. I believe it's gonna be a Tuesday game. Okay. You know, it'll be nothing better than uh, being oh. the Elite Eight. Yeah, March 19th, state quarterfinal, 7 p.m. at Gladwin High School. Okay, Eliana Jerusalem at the free throw line, shooting three. Her first free throw is up and no good. Too much on that first free throw. What a great first half <laughs> we, uh, you know, we've got here, Scoop. You know, close game, both teams playing hard. You know, they, uh, you know, oh. very similar teams. Both play aggressive defense, both have a uh, great offense. Yeah, the effort is in and out, no good. She gets one more free throw. The effort from both teams has just been something to marvel at. I mean, both teams giving their all out there. Eliana Jerusal, her third free throw is up and no good. And now there's a steal. Jerusal will get the steal and give it to Kenyon. 13 seconds to go in the opening half. Jerusal with it. Now she'll give it to McKinley. We're down to eight seconds to go. McKinley on the drive. Ball def uh, batted out of bounds, and it will be Ludington basketball. Uh, six seconds left. I'd love to see us get a basket here. Down by four. Ludington with the ball, and it will be triggered in by Jerusal. 6.1 6 seconds ago with her hustle. Enable Ludington to get the basketball back. McKinley with it now to Jerusal. Down to three seconds. Jerusal loses the ball, and here comes Nagani, and there's the buzzer. Oh, just a, a, a disappointing end to the first half right there, but you can't fault the effort of the Ludington Orioles and the Nagani Miners. What a first half of action here, and your score at the break. The Nagani Miners 26, the Ludington Orioles 22. Evan, your observations. Hey, solid first half, Scoop. You know, coming in, I think Ludington was probably, 
you know, not the one that was picked to win this game with the Nag Nagani coming in with that 24-1 and record, you know, but we brought it to him in the first half, and, uh, you know, I think we're in a good spot here at halftime. Coach Stowe is going to go in and make some t changes and talk to his girls about beating this uh, full-court press that Nagani's putting on us. We you know, it's all about being aggressive and coming to the ball. Right now we're a little bit, you know, scared to come to the ball with how, uh, you know, tough that Nagani defense is playing, so I'd like to see us be a little bit more aggressive at coming to the ball and pushing that ball down the court. We're going to be in for a great, great second half. There's no doubt in my mind about that. The Orioles trail 26-22 right now. Ludington 13-12 in that second quarter after being outscored 13-10 in the opening quarter. And we want to thank Safe Harbor Credit Union, our exclusive halftime show sponsor, where your success is our success. We belong to you. Visit them at 5511 US 10 in Ludington or give them a call 843-2323. Safe Harbor Credit Union and, of course, Indian Summer Co-op, the exclusive sponsor of tonight's LHS athletic trainer in the spotlight, Miss Jen Mraz. Indian Summer, proud to be a sponsor of the OSN and our Ludington area athletes. We wish you all the best for this season of sports. Play strong, play proud, and as always, stay healthy. Go Ludington Orioles. We'll step aside and listen to that interview right now. Stay tuned, Oriole Nation. Welcome, Oriole Nation, to the Indian Summer Ludington High School athletic trainer in the spotlight. I'm with Miss Jen Mraz, who's the Ludington High School Hard to believe it's been eight years already, Miss Jen, no. as the LHS athletic trainer. And uh, this year, more than any other, Miss Jen, you've had to live by the motto of adaptability with the way Ludington High School has uh, been remodeled. Talk a bit about what all has went into that. Oh, my gosh. It's been a long, gosh, it's been almost two years now, I think. We've been in its construction, and I moved out of my original room, which was a really nice space to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, wasn't your typical athletic training room, but I, I, I made it my own and I, I made it usable. Um, then I was moved into a very tiny office for the past year and a half that was barely big enough mm -hmm. for more than you know, having one athlete in the room with me at any given time. But now I'm moved into my what will be my official final product. But I will have to move out again before the end of the school year because they'll be renovating it. And hopefully by next December, I will be in my brand new athletic training room here at the school. But I'll actually be in a new athletic training room at Oriole Field before that. The new field house is being worked on. It should be done sometime in May, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I will be able to work out of my new athletic training room down at Oriole Field, which will be so beneficial for all the sports that we take care of down there. So it's going to be a great, hmm. great thing. Beautiful new field down there, top-notch facilities. I'm sure you're fired up about that. March is National Athletic Trainer Month. Talk a bit about that. Sure. Um, every March, the National Athletic Training Association likes to um, promote athletic training and what we do for the athletes. And this year's theme is uh, from head to toe. Hmm. So we take care of the athletes, you know, from their head to their toe. So anything from concussions, um, fractures, sprains, dislocations, heat illness, you know, any, any type of injury or illness related to sports, we deal with it. And we're here to, to take care of the athletes and get them back out on their particular mm -hmm. playing surface, whether mm -hmm. it's a basketball court or a soccer field. And, and, you know, our goal is to keep them playing. And we love yeah. what we do. We love the athletes. And so March is just a, a, a nice month to promote our, our profession and, and give back to the community. Mm -hmm. We're lucky to have you here. Um, what is it that the student athletes like best about you as their athletic trainer? Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> I might have to say my taping. <laughs> so many times athletes have to leave early and they forget to come see me before they leave and the next day they come back and say, oh, Miss Jen, mm -hmm. I don't tape like you do. So <laughs> I, I take a little pride in that. Yeah. I, I, I love to tape, so it's nice yeah. to hear them say they like my taping. What's the most challenging thing for you, the most challenging aspect about your job? I know there's some heartbreaking things that go with it when you have to tell a, go tell a coach and also tell that student athlete, look, you're not going to be playing tomorrow. I'm sure that's one of them. Oh, my gosh, absolutely. Um, that's the worst thing to have to tell someone that they're they're not going to be able to play mm -hmm. um when i can i try to let them see that for themselves so you know you may have you know let's say they have a quad strain and they want to play and i may not think they're ready to go if i were to say 
go, you're done, mm -hmm. they, they might not take it well. But if I say, okay, well, let's see what you can do, and then they try to run, and all of a sudden they realize for themselves, oh, man, I, I really can't go. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it helps build that trust so that the next time something like that does happen, I can say, listen, I don't think you should be playing. They're more likely to say, yeah, you're probably mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. um, but th that's, that's tough to have to tell someone they don't want to play. We, we try our best to keep them out there. And sometimes you just need to, I always say, I feel like the bad guy, but yeah. sometimes you got to be the bad guy and, and be the advocate for the athlete because sometimes they don't necessarily see the big picture mm -hmm. and we have to look down the road, sure. rest of the season, next year, their next sport, whatever. So, okay. I know how, mm, uh, yes, I know how much you love Ludington and uh, your parents loved it so much. They are now living up here in Ludington. That has to be just huge for you. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, my dad loves coming to the games, boys and girls games. Um, he traveled with me yesterday to Big Rapids, mm -hmm. and he had a blast. So um, it's nice to be able to just see them mm -hmm. every day. Fact, well, on the radio, it'll be last night. But. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your favorite thing about Ludington and uh, about being an athletic trainer? Oh, my gosh. I just love how welcoming everyone is in this town. Um, there's really, the, I say it every year, but there's such a look up into the stands in any given sporting event. And you're going to see so many people from the community who may not necessarily have a child playing, but they're still part of the culture of, of Ludington High School. And they just support the kids. And, and I love that. I love that community support. Your favorite restaurant in Ludington? Um, there's so many. Um, I do tend to go to Jamesport. Okay. Quite a bit, so that's probably my, my first go-to. Yeah. Okay. And uh, role models that you have had in your life? Oh, gosh, I've had so many. Um, I think last time I talked about Sally, yep. Sally yep. Uh, Nogle from mm -hmm. Michigan State. She was the head athletic trainer, football athletic trainer at Michigan State for years. She, she retired. I think they named the athletic training room after her, which okay. is quite wow. an honor. Um, and then, you know, my undergrad, well, her name is Lori Michener. She's a, a athletic trainer, physical therapist, and... Um, she just she does a lot of research. She does a lot of uh, talks and things like that. But she, she was really my, you know, my, my first big mentor yeah. was going through school. You know, Miss Jen, I've noticed there is a real camaraderie, a real a kinship amongst athletic trainers. I saw you with Big Rapids, athletic yeah. trainer. And you folks, you really get along gr uh, great together, don't you? We do. We do. Um, it's, it's nice um, to have well, our, our program through Corwell Health is, is a relatively big program. Mm -hmm. we, we, most of the schools are down in Grand Rapids, but we do have some of the regional schools as well. Reed City, Fremont, um, Grant and Nuego. So, you know, those athletic trainers yeah. I'm, I work with. Mm -hmm. um, but with Jess being so close to Big Rapids and we, we cross paths quite a bit. Um, yeah, so we've, we've all become this, this little uh, group, yeah. team regional we call ourselves. And and uh, it's just nice. When you go to those places where you know the athletic trainer, it's just even that more special. Well, congratulations, Miss Jen, on being the Indian Summer Ludington High School athletic trainer in the spotlight. All the best to you. Keep up the great work. I know that you're uh, very, very much appreciated here. And uh, go O's. Go O's. Thanks, Scoop. Welcome back to Petoskey High School. Scoop Hansen, Evan McKinley, and Mason Conger, the Orioles Sports Network in collaboration with 102.7 WMOM. A big thank you to 102.7 WMOM's Chris Nicholas, the station owner and uh, station manager down there for all his support this season as well. Ludington again was outscored 13 to 12 in the second, 13 to 10 in the first. Uh, they're down 26-22 right now, scoring in the first half for Nagani. Two points for Callie Raiula, one for Aubrey Johnson, two for Gretel Johnson, six for Kiara Waterman. Madison Peckerel, two points for Ella Mason, their star player. That's one thing, Ludington held her to two, but uh, some scoring from her teammates right there. And uh, four points from Claire O'Donnell, and two, three, four, five, six from Teresa Anderson. For the Orioles, two for Riley Stone, five for Peyton Welch, six for Eliana Jerusal, three for Emma McKinley, four for Jordan Anderson, and two for Jalen Laird. I'd like to see the Orioles trying to get that ball down low to Jordan Anderson a bit more. Yeah, early on, you know, Jordan made a couple of big impacts with the uh, offense rebounding. And, uh, you know, just like you said, I think she can make a really big impact if we're able to get the ball down low to her. On you know, the we court. saw Jalen make a yeah. couple of big, uh, you know, 
plays down in the post, I think Jordan could do the same. And some big three-pointers from the Orioles. Uh, two from Eliana Jerusal, one from Emma McKinley. Ludington with the basketball. We've begun play here in the second half. Nagani 26, Ludington 22. Jerusal to Anderson, now to... That was Welch, no good on the three-point attempt. Anderson saves it. She'll give it there to Skiba. God! Hey, Just, offensive rebound. Scoops yeah. something we didn't have much in the first half. Right there, first possession, we're able to get one in uh, in the bucket. Nice pass there from Jordan Anderson to Jenna Skiba, who gets the basket. The Orioles trail by two, 26-24. Nagani with the basketball. Here comes a three-point attempt up. No good. Long rebound to Jenna Skiba. You think that Coach Warren Stowe, the thing he emphasized was taking care of the ball the most and also getting on the boards, right? Those were probably two things that he really talked a lot about at halftime. McKinley on the drive, no good. And here comes the Nagani Miners. I like the way Emma took the ball to the basket right there, just a little too hard off the, bas off the backboard. All right, Nagani with the basketball. The winner here. Uh, we'll move on to the Elite Eight. There's a three-point attempt up, no good. Rebound McKinley. McKinley will bring the ball up now for the Orioles. The winner moves on to Gladwin. Orioles a two-on-one here. Shot, no good. Rebound up by, good by right Jerusalem. We got a tie game. Great start to the first or second half. You know, 60 minutes of basketball left for a couple of seniors out there. They don't want this yep. to be their last game. So, you know, coming out playing tough to start the second half. Jerusalem gets the basket. Nagani 26, Ludington 26. The winner plays March 19th in the state quarterfinals at Gladwin High School at 7 p.m. That's the state quarterfinals, the Elite Eight. March 19th at Gladwin High School. Now a foul has been called on the Orioles. 6.20 left in the third quarter. We want to thank Team Jamie Loney, Five Star Real Estate. If you're thinking about selling your home or property, let Team Jamie Loney and Christina Simone at Five Star Real Estate help you. They'll walk you through the process step by step. Jamie and Christina take pride in their communication organization and putting clients' wants and needs first. Call Jamie Loney at 231-794-9740 or Christina Simone, 231-343-4598 today. Team Jamie Loney, 513 South James Street in Ludington. That's Team Jamie Lestate. And we just found out last week that Christina Simone's husband, Nick, was a graduate of Kingsford High School. What do we got going on here, Nick? Or I'm sorry, <laughs> Evan. You know, the referees were trying to give someone who wasn't even in the play the foul, and I think it would have been on uh, Peyton Welch, and it would have been her fourth foul, and Coach Stowe was arguing that it was not on her. She wasn't even in the play. Now there's a steal by Nagani. No, nope, out of bounds. It will be Ludington. Okay, they, they got the ball there, but they were out of bounds. It will be Ludington basketball, and Nagani just scored a basket. They're up 20. 8 to 26. The Gawney fans are getting on the scoreboard operators. Hey, give us our two points. You've got a fan going down there right now to saying, hey, we've got it right now in the Gawney 28, Ludington 26. And it's, that's what it says on the scoreboard now. And now there's a, another turnover by the Orioles. In a game like this, you just can't turn the ball over to a good team like Nagani. Shot up, no good. Good job there by Jenna Skiba. Oh, they say it was deflected now, and it's going to be Nagani basketball. They're up 28-26. Well, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, you got to take care of the basketball in, uh, you know, big games like this. All right, it's going to be Nagani ball. They'll get it in. The shot is up, and no good, but a foul called on the Orioles, and... Going to the free throw line for Nagani will be number 33, Grace Nardi. Got a couple of players in foul trouble here early in the third quarter. Peyton Welch has three and Jordan Anderson also has three. First free throw is up and oh boy. Potoski must, uh, you know, and, and Nagani knocked Potoski out in the uh, district champion or in the regional semifinal, and they got a friendly hometown roll on that one on that first free throw that went in. Second shot also good. So two free throws for Nagani's Grace Nardi. Ludington now trails by four, 30 to 26. Welch on the dribble. Peyton Welch with it. 
5.37 to go, third quarter. Welch. Welch on the drive, shot up. No good, rebound Welch. And now a steal, and here comes Nagani. Couple of missed fouls there. Uh, Payton Welch is playing through a lot of contact. There's a shot up, no good. And Nagani is able to retrieve the miss there. And now Anderson will take the ball away. It'll be, no, it'll be a jump ball, and it's gonna be Nagani basketball. Five seventeen to go in the third quarter. Nagani 30. Orioles had tied it up. Now Nagani on a 4-0 run, and they have the basketball. Mason with it. Her shot. Oh, what a tough shot. Ella Mason. Very tough shot right there. She let it go in the paint from a diff difficult angle. She gets it, and now Nagani up 32-26. And now the Orioles turn the ball over once again, and Nagani on the attack. 6-0 run here by Nagani. They've got the ball back again. With the ball, number four, that's Callie Raiula. There's a drive and a basket. Oh, my. 8-0 run. Aubrey Johnson gets the basket. Coach Warren Stall wants and gets a timeout. Nagani just was tied up a minute ago. 40 seconds ago, Ludington tied the game up at 26 apiece. And now Nagani with an eight-point lead, 34-26. Hey, folks, the McGee Insurance Group has been serving West Michigan since 1939. They provide quality insurance coverage tailored to fit your needs and budget. McGee Insurance services include auto, commercial, home, health, life, and umbrella insurance. McGee Insurance Group, 5965 West US 10, located next door to Ludington Chiropractic and Dr. Mark Yuck. Call 231-845-5000. And Urca Auto Center is founded on trust, integrity, and respect. We are proud to offer these values in our sales and business practices, so our customers keep returning. The vehicles on our lot have the best prices and quality in the area, so come by and see us today. The Urca family has been selling vehicles in Mason County for four generations. Urca Auto Center, 3736 West US 10. Call 845-6282. Also, Oriole Nation, the LHS Drama Club and Choir presents Fiddler on the Roof, March 14th through the 16th, at 7.30 p.m. at Peterson Auditorium and also on March 17th at 2 p.m. at Peterson Auditorium. Tickets are $5, ages five and under are free. I'm fired up, I'm looking forward to it. I saw Les Mis last year, as I call it, Les Miserables, or Les Miserables. I went and watched it and loved it. I watched, watched it twice, and my wife Michelle and I look forward to taking our niece uh, to watch this on Friday night. That's Fiddler on the Roof, March 14th to the 16th, 7.30 p.m., March 17th, 2 p.m., Peterson Auditorium. Ludington with the basketball. McKinley now to Kenyon. Ludington down 34-26. Need the Orioles to... There's a pass, picked off right there. Now here comes Nagani again. Nagani is just... You know, we've said it a couple times, Evan. They're they're like looking in the mirror when Ludington looks in the mirror as far as how they play defense. And they're just as quick, if not a step quicker than, at least they've been a step quicker than we have been tonight. There's a miss, and now here come the Orioles. Welch with it. Welch on the drive. Shot up, no good. Rebound to Nagani. And now there's a steal by Stone, and Stone will give it to McKinley. 344 left in the third quarter. Miners up 34 to 26. Three point attempt up and God! Kenyon with a huge, and I mean huge, three pointer from the far baseline. Yeah, let's turn things around here. I know we got in kind of a slump here in the middle of the third quarter, but there's still plenty of time left. That's the fourth three pointer in the game for the Orioles. Two by Jerusalem, one by McKinley, one by Kenyon. Ludington down now 34 to 29. 321 to go in this third quarter. That uh, was needed in the worst of ways right there to stem an 8-0 run by the Miners. Yeah, Nagani's definitely been making the most of their uh, opportunities, forcing these turnovers and able to get buckets off of them. You know, we just need to be strong with the ball and, uh, you know, get this down. And once, once we're, we can run an offensive set, we've been doing great. Our problem has been trying to get this ball in bounds against this aggressive uh, full-court press. Ludington forced a turnover. They are on the attack right now. Three-point attempt by Stone up and no good. Rebound to Nagani's number 44, Claire O'Donnell. And she'll give it up now to her teammate, Gretel Johnson. Gretel Johnson over to Aubrey Johnson. They're sisters. She's getting the uh, 
pronunciations going over the starting lineup with Coach O'Donnell. And wide open underneath and go oh, and a foul. Oh my. Get in the basket, number 12, Gretel Johnson. And she is fouled and she'll go to the free throw line. Nagani 36, Ludington 29. That is the fourth foul there on Peyton Welch. Jenna Skiebel will come in and Peyton will take a seat on the bench. 247 left in this third quarter. In Nagani 24 and one on the year, Ludington 19 and seven. Free throw is up and no good. Kenyon comes away with it for the Orioles and she'll bring the ball up and now give it to Emma McKinley. McKinley, the Orioles main ball handler. McKinley will give it to Kenyon. Kenyon now to Stone. Stone on the drive and just shot way too hard off the backboard there. Ball fought for, and we'll have a jump ball possession arrow to the Orioles. Good hustle there by Jordan Anderson. Yeah, aggressive take to the lane. Uh, you know, Riley's falling away from the basket. It's a tough shot. I'd like to see her come to a jump stop and find a teammate who's cutting to the basket. Stone will trigger it in to Anderson. Jordan on the dribble. Now she'll give it to Emma McKinley. Emma, and her pass actually went off the, uh, uh, the rim right there, and Nagani has it. There's a drive and wide open, and there's another basket for Nagani. Getting the basket, number 20, Kiara Waterman. And we've seen Nagani do that a number of times in this game, Evan. Yeah, oh. miscommunication on defense. Someone picked up the ball handler. Then we had two girls running, and it left one wide open underneath the rim. Nagani now with a nine-point lead, their biggest lead of the game, 38 to 29. 156 left in this third quarter. Orioles will get the ball in. That's Laird with it. Laird loses it now. And I'll tell you that the, the speed of this Nagani team, I mean, they're, they're, they're like a bunch of uh, road runners. Yeah, they, uh, they, you know, they, they uh, flock to the ball, that's for sure. It, 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 the thing of it is, if I was to tell you before the game, Evan, that we would have held Ella Mason to just four points so far and Ludington would be down by nine points, you would laugh at me. And there's a shot up and good. And that was Ella Mason. She has six now in the game. It was a two-pointer. And now it is a 11-point lead for the Miners, 40 to 29. And there's another steal by the Miners. With it, number 11, Albrey Johnson. Good. I wouldn't be surprised to see Coach Stowe take a timeout here. Nagani, uh, you know, they have all the momentum right now. We got to slow down, take care of the ball, get some easy shots. Oh, my goodness. The big M momentum, big way. Uh, in a big way right now with the Nagani Miners. They're up 42 to 29. And Ludington, since they tied it up at 26 all, it's been just one three-pointer for the Orioles. Emma McKinley, her shot, no good. And it's not for lack of effort. Our Orioles are, they're playing with a lot of effort out there right now. Nagani has just kicked it up a notch or three. Yeah, you gotta give all credit to Nagani. They uh, came out of the second half you know, we uh, put the boot to them early on, and, you know, they picked it right back yeah. up. And uh... yep. McKinley's first free throw, no good. The Orioles at one time, when this game had started, they had a 10-3 lead. Then Nagani went on a 12-0 run. And at the half, Nagani had a four-point lead, 26-22. They're up right now, 42-29. So they've allowed the Orioles just seven points in this third quarter. McKinley, second free throw, no good. Out of bounds, it'll be Ludington basketball. Last touch by Claire O'Donnell. And she's just a sophomore. Kiara Waterman is a freshman. Gretel Johnson is a freshman. And Sadie Rogers, also on this roster for Nagani, she is just a freshman. So Nagani is gonna be good for some time to come. McKinley with it now inside. Ball, nah, but last touch there by the Orioles, Jenna Skiba, out of bounds. It will be Nagani basketball. 41 seconds to go in this third quarter. Nagani, 42, Ludington, 29. You know, our boys team played here earlier in the season, and they won a game here, which was Coach Shanks' 399th career coaching victory. 
But yeah, they played a yeah. uh, really tough Petoskey team, yep. too. You know, Petoskey, we haven't played here a lot, but it hasn't been a place that's been uh, too kind to the Orioles when it comes to tournament play over the years. There's a shot up, no good there by Kenyon. And here comes Nagani. Wide open underneath. Shot, oh, shot up, no good. Rebound to McKinley, seven seconds to go. McKinley with the ball, I don't know if she knows. Now she knows what time she'll pass the ball, intercept it, and there's the end of the third quarter. And a just a disastrous third quarter for the Ludington Orioles. They are down 42 to 29 as we enter play here in the fourth quarter at Petoskey High School. And we want to thank Ludington Chiropractic. Evan, I'll let you give Dr. Mark Yak at Ludington Dr. Chiropractic. Mark Yak, if you're having back in the chiropractor, Dr. Mark, no appointment is necessary at Ludington Chiropractic. It's strictly a walk-in clinic. That's Dr. Mark Yak at Ludington Chiropractic, 965 East Ludington Avenue, located next to Pizza Hut. For questions, call 231-843-1874. Dr. Mark Yak, he's a great guy. I bear with you. He's my chiropractor. I always enjoy going there. And, uh, and seeing him and uh, getting in a joke with him. He is a big supporter of Ludington High School, the Ludington Orioles himself. He was a basketball player, played for Gank at Ludington, and also a baseball player, played for Coach Don Stokely. And belated happy birthday wishes to Coach Don Stokely. He's old, or 80 years young. Stokes has looked great. I saw him last weekend down to Sportsman's, and uh, we had a little birthday celebration down there for him. And he's looking great. Always great seeing my coach, the affectionately known as Stokes. He's a member of the Mason County Sports Hall of Fame and also the Michigan Coaches Baseball Hall of Fame. He might even be the Michigan Coaches Hall. He's, I know he's a member of one of the Hall of Fames. I think it is the State Coaches Baseball Hall of Fame. All right, Evan, Orioles got their work cut out for them. They trail 42-29. They were outscored 16-7 in that third quarter by the Miners. Hey, eight minutes left, make the most of it. Down 13, so plenty of time. You know, get some stops and make some buckets. We'll get, uh, cut into this lead in no time. Nagani with the basketball to begin play here in the second quarter. And they're going to take as much time off this clock as is humanly possible. Yeah, Nagani doesn't have to be in any yep. rush. You know, we're going to have to play a little bit more aggressive on defense. Yeah, they're going to pull the Orioles out right now. Ludington's not going to be able to sit back right there because Nagani with the 42-29 lead right now, they, you know, the... The clock is their friend. On the court for the Orioles, you have Kenyon, McKinley, Skiba, Anderson. There's a shot blocked by Anderson. Oh, no! They're going to call a foul there on Anderson. Boy, that looked like that was all ball, Evan. Yeah, uh, Scoop, I'm going to agree with you there. We didn't get many foul calls there in the uh, third quarter either. Foul called there on Jordan. As I was saying, Skiba on the court with Kenyon, Jerusal, Anderson, and McKinley. First free throw is no good. We'd like to thank Groundworks Landscaping and Todd Stowe, another of our fine sponsors. Second free throw is up and good by number 11, Aubrey Johnson. Groundworks Landscaping, folks, this time of year, Groundworks offers the following services, firewood sales and delivery, subcontracting, and general labor by the hour. The phone number 231-690-6994. They're located at 5634 West Dewey Road. That's Groundworks Landscaping and proprietor Todd Stowe. All right, Ludington on the attack. They're trailing 43 to 29, 702 left in this regional number nine, division two basketball game. Shot put up by Jerusalem, no good. Jump ball, possession arrow to the Ludington Orioles. Jordan Anderson will trigger the ball in. Anderson, she'll get it in to Kenyon. Kenyon, and boy, I tell you, the, uh, the Nagani Miners, they play in your face defense. Yeah, they are and a it, great defensive yep. team, and they've made it hard on us all night long. Yep, and they force another Oriole turnover. And with the ball, number 11, Aubrey Johnson. Johnson will give the ball now to Teresa Anderson. Nagani came into this game 24 and one on the year. Their lone loss coming to one of their rivals, the Ishpeming Hematites, 57 to 53. They got even with the Hematites later in the season, 65 to 56. 6.17 to go with the ball, number 24. That's Teresa Anderson. There's a shot up, no good. That shot was put up by Aubrey Johnson. Skiba with it for the Orioles now. She'll give it to Emma McKinley. 
McKinley ahead now to Canyon. Canyon to McKinley. McKinley, three point attempt up. Jerusalem, no good. Rebound to Claire O'Donnell. And she will give the ball to Ella Mason. Now with the ball, number 11, Aubrey Johnson. Over to Kiera Waterman. Waterman, Ella Mason. Mason will give it now to Aubrey Johnson. We're down to 524 to go in the game. Again, the Nagani Miners in no rush whatsoever. They're chewing valuable time up here. Ball out of bounds. I think we might have caught a break right there. Well, we, I might have been a kick ball, but he's calling it black ball. We need yes. the ball. Into the Oriole lineup, number five, Peyton Welch. She's got four fouls. We need the ball with some baskets. You know, once we get some baskets set up in our full court press, maybe get some easy steals. We need some instant offense is what we need. You're right on that. Timeout on the floor. 5.15 to go in the game. Nagani 43, Ludington 29. And again, the winner of this game will be playing at Gladwin High School at 7 p.m. on March 19th. Folks, uh, got to give some love to some more of our awesome sponsors. Lundquist Furniture, West Michigan's largest furniture store, located at 203 North Main Street, downtown Scottville. Family owned and operated since 1940. For your furniture needs, call Lundquist, 231-757-3368. You know, the way this game started out, Evan, Ludington jumped out to that 10-3 lead. Everything was clicking. Everything was going on all cylinders. And uh, Ngani just took a step, looked like they just took a step back. And then they got it going, went on a 12-0 run. And even though the uh, Orioles were uh, down by just four at the half, 26 to 22, seemed like Nagani had righted themselves. And I mean, they took it to another level in the third quarter. Yeah, you got it exactly right. This uh, defense totally shut us down. Uh, you know, we really struggle with this full court press. Yeah, I haven't seen us make this many turnovers or have this many turnovers in a game. I pretty much all season. I mean, there's been a few games where we where we were hit by the uh, the turnover rash, uh, you know, uh, by the turnover bug, but not like we have been tonight. Yeah, Nagani's a great team. Uh, you know, five minutes left in this game, we're gonna have to make a push to, uh, you know, try to come back. Yep. We've been uh, scoreless here in the fourth quarter so yeah. far. Yeah, they've, so they've, gotta... they've only scored one, but they, you know, as long as they got the lead they have now, they don't have to score. Well, that's you know, that's just... exactly right. They can take as much time off the clock as long as they keep the ball. Exactly. Also, uh, right now, we'd like to thank Ludington Paint and Glass. Matt Ewing, he is a great fan, a great supporter, a great advocate of Ludington Orioles sports. And uh, his business has been mixing paint and service since 1948. The local store with more, located at 213 South James Street, downtown Ludington. Call LPNG 843-8250. Ludington Paint and Glass, the local source for all of your projects. Proud to support Ludington Orioles Sports while being a sponsor on the Orioles Sports Network. I've already got uh, some folks coming up to me, some businesses asking uh, Thad Shank and myself about the upcoming fall and when Ludington Orioles football rolls around, if they can be a sponsor on the Orioles Sports Network. We love hearing that. All right, Ludington with the ball. Anderson, her shot, no good. Ball fought for, and Nagani has it. And now I think we're going to have a rip. We're going to have a foul called on Riley Stone. Yeah, you love the aggressiveness by Riley in there attacking the glass. You know, she got called for the foul, but she wanted that jump ball. We got 448 left in this game. The Orioles have only been able to muster seven points in this second half to this point. Yeah, all credit to this Nagani defense. Yep. All right, Nagani on the attack. With the ball, number 11, that's Aubrey Johnson. She is a junior. Sister Gretel Johnson is just a freshman. And I got a kick out of that when I was talking with Coach Mike O'Donnell. I said, hey, that was one of my high school nicknames, Gretel. <laughs> he got a kick out of that. He goes, tell me about how you got a nickname Gretel. And I said, well, people, my last name, Hanson, Hanson, Hansel and Gretel. Uh, he said, oh, thanks for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're down to 4-12 to go in the game. Now a foul is going to be called on Emma McKinley. And speaking of Gretel Johnson, she checks into the ball game for the Nagani Miners. 
and she will replace Teresa Anderson. Nagani 43, Ludington 29. Yeah. Yeah. Give a lot of credit to this uh, Nagani. They, they brought a big student section with them. They had to have brought a separate bus, you would think, for that. They oven. did bring a second yeah. bus. I did uh, see it as I was walking in the gym tonight. Great support of their girls basketball team. Another foul called on Emma McKinley. Again, a big thank you to all of Oriole Nation who've supported our boys and girls basketball teams throughout this entire season. It's been... Uh, a, there's a drive and a basket by Aubrey Johnson. Nagani, 45, Ludington, 29. I was going to say it's been a great ride for both the Ludington boys and girls basketball teams. When you make it to a regional championship game, you have had an outstanding and a successful season. Yeah, both the boys and girls team made it to the regional final this year. You know, it looks yep. like both teams are going to fall just short of a, a regional title. That was, that but, was, yeah, go, go ahead, know, go ahead, Evan. You know, I'm sorry. credit to both teams. Uh, you know, both had great seasons and, you know, came home with a district title. Everyone's season's got to come to an end. Unfortunately, uh, for the boys and girls, it's yep. going to probably come in the uh, regionals. And both teams were runners up in the West Michigan Conference Lakes Division. Ludington boys to Whitehall, Ludington girls to Fremont. There was a uh, foul there called. Jerusalem was fouled. She is at the free throw line right now. Her shot is going to be short. You know, there at the end of that first half, there, Jerusalem had a nice, you know, she had some big three-pointers there in the first half, and she was fouled, and she went to the line there and wasn't, wasn't able to get a free throw there at the very end of the first half. And I'm not, uh, you know, not, not trying to throw her under the bus or anything, but that, and then Ludington got the ball back, and they weren't able to convert there, Evan, and that seemed to just have an effect on the Orioles with their momentum yeah. as they went into halftime. A couple of times we weren't able to capitalize on our chances, which, you know, that happens in, uh, you know, the game of basketball and life as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, you know, a lot to learn out of this uh, basketball game. And, you know, for the seniors, they're going to go on and uh, do bigger and better things yep. in life. And, you know, for the juniors, they'll be back next year. And, and you know, hopefully Coach Stoll will be back and uh, lead them to another yeah. district title and into the regionals. And Eliana will be back. And, I again, I'm not trying to... Uh, to be negative with her. I'm a big fan of Eliana Jerusalem. I just, just that was uh, that was a tough situation there at the end of the first half. You know, pressure's but, on, yeah. Scoop. You got yeah. all those uh, 55 kids over there screaming and shouting who knows what. You know, you, everyone's watching you in the gym. It's tough to make those free throws sometimes. Got, got a timeout on the floor. Nagani 45, Ludington 29. Nagani has held Ludington scoreless in this fourth quarter and only given them seven points in the second half after the Orioles had uh, put up 22 points in the first half. Well, let's see, uh, big shout out again to Benedict's Auto Center, providing the best in auto body repairing and painting since the 1940s. Benedict's Auto Center would like to remind you to exercise extra caution on the roadways. However, if you do end up with a scrape, if you're involved in a fender bender, or if you suffer major collision damage, call Mike Benedict, 231-613-4111. Benedict's Auto Center, 1742 US 10 between Ludington and Scottville. We'll put collision damage in reverse. Let's see if we got any Oriole Nation chiming in. We can give a few shout outs here. I'm checking with my technical engineer, Mason Conger, Wayne Holden, great season girls. Jay Hansen. Hey, Jay Hansen, he's a member of the Mason County Sports Hall of Fame. Great swimmer at Ludington. Shout out Sutton Hansen. Okay. Also, uh, Jolina. Uh, Hankwitz Heating and Cooling. Carla Shea says Go O's. Uh, also, Larry Brown, the tennis coach. And uh, several other Orioles were back to action right now here at Petoskey High School. We have a double dribble violation on Petoskey with 2.37 to go in this regional number nine, Division II championship girls basketball game from Petoskey High School. McKinley with the basketball. And she'll give it now to Jerusalem. Jerusalem will fake the three. Now to Stone. Stone in the paint. Turn around, shot up, and God, Nice move there by Riley Stone. She gets the basket, and Ludington trails 45-31 to with 2.14 to go in the game. 
Yeah, the girls trying to play hard, uh, you know, maybe make a run to try to get some points back here at the end of the game. Yeah. They're going to give up so that final buzzer goes off. You look at the Orioles seniors, Riley Stone, Emma McKinley, Carly Mesher, unfortunately could not play because of an injury those last few games. Sabrina Ramirez, Ayana Rangel, so the Orioles seniors. And you know, you look when your sister was brought up, Emma McKinley and Carly Mesher, and Riley Stone, they were on that team their sophomore year that went to the Breslin Center. They were on that team that defeated the Nagani Miners in the regional championship game at Gaylord High School two years ago. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They all had a uh, great career being a Ludington basketball player as well as, you know, volleyball, golf, you know, whatever other sports they played. Soccer, I think they all played. Ella Mason at the free throw line. Her first free throw is good. Mason with seven points in the game. Ludington has done a nice job on her, but her teammates have come through in a big way. Yeah, this is a heck of a ball is team. I mean, when your best player can only score six points and you still put up, you yeah. know. Yeah, well, as far as scoring, Evan, she's done a lot of other great things. Second free throw also good, so Mason has eight points in the game. Nagani 47, Ludington 31. There's a steal now by the Miners. Mason with it. Nagani, a very well-coached team as well by Coach Mike O'Donnell. Now a foul is going to be called on Emma McKinley. That's her third, 136 to go in the game. As you mentioned, no, no quit in our Ludington Orioles. You know you're never going to have quit from Emma McKinley. Free throw up and in there by Ella Mason. Second attempt up and also good. Mason gets both free throws and the Orioles are down 49 to 31. Again, Ludington was down just 26 to 22 at the half. But basketball games are 32 minutes, Evan, as well you know. Yeah, all credit to Nagani. Yeah. They're a great basketball team. They came to play tonight. Yep. Jerusal, nice pass inside Anderson. Her shot, no good. Rebound Anderson, no good, but she's fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line and shoot two with 1.15 left in this game. Nagani up 49 to 31. Getting set to check into the Nagani lineup, number 44, Claire O'Donnell. Jordan Anderson at the free throw line. She wears jersey number 40. She's a junior. She's already signed a, to go to the first free throw is good. She is signed to go to the University of Nebraska Omaha to play volleyball, Division I. And of course, your sister, Emma McKinley, and she will be playing Division I golf at Detroit Mercy. Look forward to following the career of those two young ladies to continue following their career, I should say. Heck yeah, pretty cool that uh, they're going to play Division I sports and yep. uh, also continue their academics. Second free throw, no good. However, the rebound to Stone. She'll give it to McKinley. McKinley now to Jerusal. 104 left in the game. Jerusal on the drive. Shots good! And she's fouled. Yeah, playing to the end, Eliana Jerusal. She isn't going to give up. A strong, aggressive take. Uh, you know, gets the basket yep. and the foul. Love her aggressiveness. She's at the free throw line. Orioles down 49 to 34. 103 left in the game. Jerusalem's free throw is up and good. Eliana completes the three-point play. 11 points in the game for Jerusalem. The Orioles have cut it to 49 to 35. 103 left in the game. Timeout on the floor. And we again, we want to thank Groundworks Landscaping and their proprietor, Todd Stowe. This time of year, Groundworks offers the following services, firewood sales and delivery. Subcontracting and general labor by the hour. The phone number 231 690 6994. That is Groundworks Landscaping. And uh, they can, uh, their address is 5634 West Dewey Road. Also, a shout out to Dr. Mark Yuck and Ludington Chiropractic. If you are having back and neck pain and need to see a chiropractor to relieve that pain, go on out. Out to uh, head on out, folks, to Ludington Chiropractic to see Dr. Mark Yak. No appointment necessary. Ludington Chiropractic, strictly a walk in clinic. That's Dr. Mark Yak at Ludington Chiropractic, 5965 East Ludington Avenue. 
located next to Pizza Hut. For questions, call 231-843-1874. Nagani basketball. During that timeout, Coach Stowe had the seniors check out of their uh, last uh, high school basketball game, so a new group of Orioles are in. Yeah, number 50's in there, Ayana Rangel, she's a senior. Also, Jalen Laird, number 44, she is a sophomore. You have number 12 in the lineup, that is Ashley Stowe, she is a junior. Also in number 15, Reese Willis, a junior. And the last Oriole on the court, number 32, Isabel Ramirez. She is a junior. 48 seconds to go. Nagani 49, Ludington 35. Orioles were down 13 to 10 at the end of one. They trailed 26-22 at the half. And they were down 42-29 after that big Nagani third quarter when the Miners outscored the Orioles 16 to seven. Yeah, big second half by Nagani. It really shut us down with that defensive uh you know, showing. At the free throw line for the Miners, number 24, Teresa Anderson. First free throw is good. Miners will, will move on to the Elite Eight, the state quarterfinals. They will play at Gladwin on March 19th at 7 p.m. Second free throw, no good. And the hustle there again there, just They've gotten to a lot of loose balls tonight where they've just got there just before the Ludington player has. 30 seconds to go, Nagani 50, Ludington 35. There's a steal, almost a steal there by Jalen Laird and now a foul is gonna be called on Jalen Laird. I understand that one of her nicknames is Jaybird and also I found out recently that Peyton Welch's nickname is Bird. It's one word I remember from learning. I took a bit of Spanish in high school. And a bird in Spanish is El Pajaro, or the bird. I don't know where that came from. It's just <laughs> stuck in my head. Two free throws for Nagani. Sadie Rogers, who's checked into the ball game. Nagani up 52 to 35. Ashley Stowe will give the ball to Jalen Laird. Laird now over to Isabel Ramirez. Ramirez to Rangel. Ramirez, her shot is up and no good. Rebound to Nagani's Mason Del Angelo, who's in the game. And there's the buzzer. And the Nagani Miners are the Division II regional number nine champions. They defeat the Ludington Orioles by the score of 52 to 35. Nagani will move on to the Elite Eight to the state quarterfinals with a record of 25 and one. Ludington season comes to an end. A great, great season for our Ludington Orioles. They finish at 19 and eight. Evan McKinley. Yeah, you know, this game doesn't take away from all the accomplishments they made during the year. You know, how great of a year they had. You know, district title, um, second place in the West Michigan Conference. You know, one game doesn't take away from the entire year. This Nagani team's a heck of a ball team, so I wish them the best as they uh, move on to the Elite Eight next week. I couldn't have said it better than you just said it right there. They'll uh, they'll move eight quarterfinals. They'll play at Gladwin. Ludington again ends at 19 and eight on the year. Trophy presentation right now and medal presentation for the Nagani Miners, and they are a very very talented basketball team. No doubt about that. Yeah, they, I wouldn't be surprised uh, you know, to see them make a run at Breslin. A heck of a ball team. Their best player tonight. Only had what, six, six, eight oh, points? Oh, actually she had uh, two, four, six. She had 10 points tonight, Ella Mason. Yep. And, but their, their scoring was so balanced. They play in your face defense. They are very, very quick to the ball. And uh, they are a really good all around basketball team. We'd like to thank our exclusive post-game sponsor, Smith & Eddie Insurance of Ludington, Scottville, and Manistee, a caring business foremost in insurance and community support. For peace of mind, let Smith & Eddie handle all of your insurance needs. Big shout out to Scott Smith. You talk about somebody who loves Orioles sports and is a big advocate of the Orioles, and that's Scott Smith. 
You know, speaking of Scott Smith, a Bravo Zulu salute to Gavin Smith and all the Ludington swimmers who made it to the state finals. Uh, they finished 29th and they had a nice showing, the Ludington boys swim team. So congratulations to them. Again, we want to uh, remind everybody the LHS Drama Club and Choir presents Fiddler on the Roof, March 14th to the 16th, 7.30 p.m. and uh, March 17th at 2 p.m. at Peterson Auditorium. Tickets are $5, ages five and under are free. Looking forward to that. So Ludington finishes the year again, 19 and eight on the season. Uh, scoring tonight for Nagani, two points for Kelly Raula, two points for Sadie Rogers, Two, four, six, eight, ten for Aubrey Johnson, four for Gretel Johnson, eight for Kiara Waterman, three for Madison Peckerel, six for Grace, no, I'm sorry, that's four for Claire O'Donnell, two for Grace Nardi, Teresa Anderson, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Ella Mason tonight with ten points. For the Ludington Orioles, four for Riley Stone, five for Peyton Welch, two for Jenna Skiba. 11 for Eliana Jerusal, three for Emma McKinley, three for Madeline Kenyon, five for Jordan Anderson, and two points for Jalen Laird. And uh, the season comes to an end for the Ludington Oriole girls, just like it did for the Ludington Oriole boys in the regional championship game. Kind of takes me back a few years to a um, couple years ago when Ludington lost to Escanaba and both boys and girls in the regional championship game. You know, but uh, the, the tradition of Ludington basketball continues on in other district district championships for the Orioles and the boys. The Ludington girls, by the way, were going for, and I counted them today over on the banner at Holly Gym. If they had won tonight, it would have been, I believe, the se sixth or seventh. Now, I can't, it was either sixth or seventh. It would have been uh, the sixth or seventh regional championship in Ludington girls basketball history. Final thoughts on this one as we wait for Coach Warren Stowe, Evan. As the season comes to an end, you know, the seniors got to move on to bigger and better things. And, uh, you know, the underclassmen had to come up, step up, and, you know, hopefully uh, we'll be back here next year covering a game. You know, whether it's here in Petoskey or Gaylord, that seems to be where most of the regionals end up. So I hope to uh, be back here next year. Well, if you look at our roster, you got Peyton Welch, a junior, Jenna Skiba's a junior, Ashley Stowe, Reese Willis, Eliana Jerusal, Madeline Kenyon, just a sophomore. You also have Isabel Ramirez, J.C. Cole, she's a sophomore, Jordan Anderson, a junior, Jalen Laird, a sophomore, Maddie Lynn, a sophomore, and Severa Moser, a sophomore. So uh, right now, again, I want to thank uh, Mason Conger, our OSN 102.7 WMOM technical engineer for his work tonight. Uh, been fun, enjoyable. It's been a blast working with you this year, Evan. I look forward to doing it again next year. Uh, Oriole Nation, we look forward to you all tuning back in in the fall for Ludington football. And I know we'll open up at home against the Alpena Wildcats. I think they're the Wildcats from up north. And that'll be at Oriole Field. Uh, I don't have the specific date. I know it'll be late August, but uh, we look forward to being back with Oriole Nation in the fall. And uh, you know what? We're going to give Coach Warren Stowe about another minute here, another 30 seconds. And just like Coach Shank, you know, who he had a long talk with his boys after their regional, their tough regional loss at Gaylord last week. And uh, Coach Warren Stowe, again, I'm sure he's having that talk with his girls right now. Yeah, I can only imagine the talk. Uh, I never never got the uh, final speech as a uh, season ended with COVID, but, you know, with the season ending on the regional, I'm sure he's having a long talk. You know, the seniors got to move on. And, you know, the last game that they got to play together, so... So I can only imagine what that talk is. And, you know, it might be a little while until he uh, comes out of the locker yeah. room. In fact, uh, we're going to make the executive decision right now. I'm sure Coach Thad Shank would probably agree with us. We are going to uh, pull the plug on this one right now. And again, after a great season by our Ludington Orioles, they end up 19-8 and eight on the season. And uh, with that said, uh, for our executive producer, executive director Thad Shank, for Chris Nicholas down at 102.7 WMOM, for our technical engineer tonight for 102.7 WMOM and the OSN, Mason Conger. For my color commentary man tonight, Evan McKinley. This is the voice of the Orioles, Todd Scoopanson, saying so long from Petoskey High School. Once again, your final score in the Division II Regional Number 9 Girls Championship Basketball Game, the Nagani Miners 52, the Ludington Orioles 35.
Take care, Oriole Nation. You stay classy, and we'll be back with you in the fall.